A lot of stuff to do. There's always something to do here. So let's walk on over here and I uh, will show you guys the uh, greenhouse. The greenhouse is just massive now. It's, it's crazy. Um, I started out with pretty much just um, just from right here all the way to over here and that was pretty much it. That's all that's all I had you know for a greenhouse. Um, but when I built the pond, the pond took up the entire greenhouse. So I'm like okay well I could uh, seal it off and deal with very cramped quarters inside or I could basically build another one of these in front of it and extend it. So I chose to extend it because, you know, give me more room to do stuff inside. So the greenhouse is now uh, more than 20 feet long. It's uh, 11 feet wide. It's, it's the biggest greenhouse that I've ever owned in my entire life. Uh, we use cattle panels and pressure treated wood to, uh, to build it and uh, these walls um, go down into the ground. Uh, this, the first greenhouse, the walls go three feet into the ground. The uh, extension goes only a foot into the ground because I figured you don't really need to dig, it, dig a deeper trench for you know, those walls because we're attaching it to this so it's strong enough. And uh, these cattle panels are really strong. We have them uh, attached to the uh, pressure treated wood with uh, fence staples. They've withstood, I, I believe, the winds last week when it was really windy. Uh, we had really bad winds, actually. Um, I believe they were upwards of 45, um, maybe 50 miles an hour, you know, around there, maybe. And um, uh, the greenhouse withstood that. So it's incredibly strong. We did a great job building it. Of course, couldn't have done it without the help of my dad. Uh, he really helped me a lot with this. Um, so it's a nice, strong greenhouse, and it's going to... It's going to last a very long time. The plastic only lasts about four years, but the overall frame will last a lot longer. So the plastic has, has, to be, has to be replaced every four years because the sun just eats it up, even though it has UV inhibitors in it and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and head on inside and uh, take a look at the new things I did to the pond and the new filter and stuff. Uh, it's really cool that the greenhouse is so big now because uh, there's just so much space. It's, it's so much fun. I love it. So, okay, as we uh, come over here to the entrance, as we come over here to the entrance, um, you can see we have a lot of uh, our regular potted plants inside here. Uh, not all of them, but I'm working on that. <laughs> I'm working on moving them all in here. But uh, we have the plumerias inside the greenhouse to uh, keep them warm during the winter time because uh, it, it can get, you know, 30 some odd degrees over here. So it can get really, really cold, uh, which is not good for plumerias. Anything under 30 and they start to freeze and then they could die and that's not good for me. So we moved a lot of the plumerias inside here for the winter time and that'll keep them uh, nice and safe and warm, you know. So take a look at this. Take a look at the inside. Isn't this awesome? I mean, to me, when you walk into the greenhouse, it looks like a church with these really high ceilings and just one continuous long, you know, hall looking structure. I think it looks awesome. It was, it, it was, you know, it was a challenge building it, but the end result is just, it's so freaking awesome. And there's so much space in here. So we still have dirt floors in here. I eventually want to get gravel in here to uh, minimize the dust because every time you walk, you know, dirt gets picked up and it can get really dust in here. And that's not good because the uh, dust gets in the water in the pond and kind of can screw things up. So we'll be working on that. Uh, so let's go on over here and I'll show you guys the uh, new filter that I built. So this was a 55 gallon uh, reservoir that I used to mix uh, water for my regular plants. I would fill this up and I would put uh, uh, pH uh, adjusting chemicals in here to adjust the pH down to 6.5, which is a good pH range for normal potted plants, helps them absorb uh, most of the nutrients that they need to grow and stay healthy. Um, but I really figured that, you know, instead of just having that micron sock that I had before, um, filtering out everything in the uh, pond, I figured it would be better to have something much bigger and something that can collect biological bacteria so that, you know, in the future I can eventually add fish and things like that. And also something to give me room to add heaters and, you know, basically take everything that's in the pond and put it in here so it gives me more space in the pond as well. So I have the CO2 going in here. I have uh, two 300 watt heaters in here. I have another heater on the way because uh, that pretty much means, or I have another heater on the way because uh, two of these they're, they're, they're Eheim heaters and they're rated for 264 gallons each. So the pond is 600 gallons, so two of them really won't cover it. So I have another one coming to 
cover or that will cover the whole pond you know as far as how many gallons and it'll heat the pond uh, more evenly and and uh, more and keep it more at a more stable temperature um, but uh, yeah we have two heaters in here right now and uh, you know surprisingly the water is uh, you know it's not toasty but it's uh, much warmer than it was this water was freezing before I added the heaters and it, it made it really it was difficult for me because you know, on Mondays and Tuesdays when I'm packaging stuff, I'm having to reach in here all the time and grab plants. And guys, my hands were like icicles. My hands were frozen when I was working on this thing um, or when I was packaging plants and stuff. So it's nice that it's the water's a little warmer now, which will, you know, keep my hands warmer on Mondays and Tuesdays when I'm doing all my packaging. So, uh, so yeah, we got uh, a biological media in here too. I'm using lava rock, uh, volcanic rock for biological media. It's very uh, porous, has a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, surface area, a lot of pores for water to go into and good biological bacteria to collect on. So that's really good. That's sitting at the bottom here and then I have an egg crate uh, that I cut to size to fit in here above that and that's where the heaters sit on top. Um, I had to do that or else the, heater, the heaters would be sitting on the rocks and that's not good because they can break because they're glass. Um, and yeah, like I said, we got the uh, CO2 going in there as well. And then I also got a 5 micron sock in here as well, filtering out all the little fine particles so it keeps the water crystal clear. They have to be replaced or washed out uh, once every, uh, every week or two weeks. Um, I usually just normally spray them out and that helps them last a little bit longer. But after you know a month or so, they get so clogged you can't really reuse them at all. So the filter socks have to be replaced at least once a month, but you can wash them out and make them last longer. But we're using a 5 micron sock. So most, most hobbyists in, in the aquarium hobby use 100 micron, 200 micron, maybe a 50 micron. Um, and that does a great job at filtering out a lot of fine particles. But, you know, the smaller micron that you get, the smaller, smaller particles you'll, fil you'll filter out, which is good because um, it keeps, you know, the water crystal clear. So I'm using a 5 micron. So as you can imagine, that filters out a lot of really fine particles. And you can definitely tell because the water is uh, really, really nice and clear. So um, we did that. We built, um, or I built, <laughs> a new filter. Uh, I mounted it above the pond um, so that uh, just because, you know, gravity, I needed, uh, you know, it to be higher than the pond so the water would siphon out in, back into the pond. Uh, we still have the UV sterilizer hooked up, so that's also keeping the water nice and crystal clear. And, um, and yeah, you know, that, that's pretty much it. Let's uh, get a little closer over here, Dad and uh, we can uh, take a look at the pond here. Now you may notice that um, it looks uh, really green, the sand looks green, and that's algae. Um, I knew that was gonna happen. You can't expect to have uh, crystal white sand in a pond exposed to natural sunlight and have it remain uh, you know, that nice, beautiful snow white color. It, it's just not gonna happen unless you're in here siphoning the gravel. But there is algae on the sand and the snails and uh, all the other invertebrates I have in here are taking care of that. They're eating the algae and uh, I'm slowly seeing the, the sand starting to turn a more um, white color, you know, so that means they're eating a lot of the algae, which is good. I'll be adding a lot more algae eating fish in here eventually once I get that second heater, you know, once the temperatures are more stable. So that'll definitely help. But there is um, there's not there's no algae on the plants. And that's the good thing. If there's algae on the plants, that makes my job a lot harder because uh, you know my customers do not like algae on their plants. It, it's not something you want to spread around, you know. <laughs> so, but that's that's the good thing. There's no algae on the plants, but there's algae on the substrate, and that's not a big deal. And you know, eventually, once the plants grow, because there's several plants in here that I'm really not selling yet. I'm letting them grow out uh, to the really to their full potential, so I can propagate them myself and you know, sell them myself, um, mainly because a lot of the distributors that I work with, they don't sell these plants, you know, so I have to grow them myself, um, you know, so I, I'm i letting a lot of them grow out, so eventually they will cover the whole substrate, which will um, block a lot of the natural sunlight uh, that's, you know, currently reaching the substrate, you know, so that algae pretty much won't grow as prevalent as it's growing now, because plants will be covering the substrate, you know. But the uh, plants are doing really good. Some of these plants are growing like crazy. And because all the natural sunlight in here, the red plants like the Ludwigia, the Amania gracilis, um, a couple of my other red plants, you know, the Rotala macrandra, they are developing really dark red, beautiful coloration. It's, it's so 
so nice. I've never gotten that that really deep dark red coloration before in my plants. Um, so I definitely think it's the natural sunlight that's helping me accomplish that. But yeah, a lot of the plants are doing great. They're growing like crazy. They're very, very healthy. I dose a lot of liquid nutrients. I have CO2 going, so that's definitely helping them along. Um, but yeah, everything is going really, really great here at Jacob's Nursery. I'm so glad I got this extension done in the greenhouse. It's really giving me a lot of space uh, to do what I need to do. So glad I got that filter uh, hooked up. You know, I can put the heaters in there and good biological bacteria will collect in there. And uh, that means I can add fish. So in my future video, you'll definitely see, um, you know, see stuff about fish because I'm going to be adding different types of fish in here. I don't just want to limit it, limit it to pond fish. I want to have, you know, regular planted tank fish in here too. Maybe some rainbow fish, uh, neon tetras. I can definitely do that now because the water will be nice and warm for them. So there's a lot more to come here on Jacob's Aquarium, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it.